welcome to DeVille's webinar. Today, my colleagues Nehemiah and Greg will be showcasing the FAM LEAFIS 2. They'll discuss the cut quality that you can expect from the LEAFIS while keeping hygiene, operator safety, and ease of use top of mind. Now we reserve some time at the end of our sessions for any questions you may have. Simply click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll take your questions at that time. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Greg. Thank you very much, Anna. I'll just start with a little introduction about who we are and uh, why we'll be able to help uh, on these type of uh, applications. So DeVille Technologies is highly regarded for our focus on food safety and R&D product innovations, resulting in our problem-solving approach to application-based food processing systems. Our approach is based on 40 years of sanitary design experience through consultative engineering with our clients. Our partnership with FAM, who are a leading manufacturer of cutting machines, allows DeVille to help define the equipment or the system requirements based on specific challenges. Fundamentally, we are an equipment manufacturer, but rather than simply selling machines as a product, our goal is to use equip our equipment portfolio as tools towards solving these challenges by building customized engineered solutions. Today's demonstration is a glimpse into our toolbox with a focus on FAM's LEAFIS-2 transversal cutter. The LEAFIS-2 is the largest machine available for highest capacity in our line of transverse belt cutters, which also include the medium capacity Mantis 2 and the brand new state-of-the-art Volantis. The Leafus 2 is also the most hygienically designed transverse cutter available on the market and can be further customized to meet even higher standards if needed. Nehemiah will now look at the standard design features of Leafus 2 that help to facilitate sanitation and operation, including operator safety, sanitary design and food safety, ease of operation, and automation and line integration. Nehemiah, over to you. Thanks, Greg, a ton for the introduction. What I'll do right now is I'll take you on a walkthrough through the machine. And uh, with each point in the machine that I point out, I will highlight a couple of the areas that Greg just mentioned. What we'll do is we'll start with the most natural point uh, where a machine is, uh, where, where you start with a machine, and that would be the end feed. The V-belt slicer is designed with, well, there's a reason it's called a V-belt. You have two belts that are um, installed into the machine in a v, v pattern. The product is fed into the machine uh, with the belt running a specified speed and the uh, cutting head, which we'll see in a minute, running at its own specified speed. If you look down, I'll take this camera just off and, and show you up a little bit. As you can see down through the product zone, the product zone and the mechanical zone are 100% separated. So there is no interaction between mechanical parts and the food products itself. That lends itself extremely well to food safety. Um, as we walk around the machine, we're, gonna, we're going to open up, the, um, open up the outlet chute, but as we do so, you're going to see a, a feature of the operator safety that we've designed the machine for. As you'll see, this outlet chute cannot be opened as you have a hockey key system here that is keeping both the main hood and the outlet chute, the most dangerous parts of the machine, closed. In order for these parts of the machine to be opened, the hockey key must be removed from the control cabinet. While the machine is running, that is not possible. The machine must be powered down 100% and the internal zero speed sensor, which ensures that the wheel is 100% immobile, once that triggers, then it unlocks the key. We can unlock the key, take it out of the control cabinet, and install it into the hockey key system. Once that is open, we're able to access both the outlet chute, where the product zone, uh, where the cut zone is, as well as the main hood, where the processing is also done. I'm gonna take you up a, a little close, up close once again. As you can see, we have the main components here that drive the machine, and and you can see how we've designed it such that all these gears and these systems come, don't come into food contact at all. As we look at the actual cutting zone, you have the cutting wheel, which is set at its own specified speed. 
But then you also have the actual design of the cutting zone. Um, we've designed the leafus with a single plate, um, a, a single plate for the outfeed, rather than uh, a rather than a plate to plate facing for the outfeed zone. In addition, you have the actual outfeed chute itself. The outfeed chute is not just a simple piece of metal uh, designed to make sure the product gets out. It's actually spe specially designed to decelerate and um, decelerate spe specifically leafy vegetables. I'll go ahead and close this up. Well, actually I'm gonna leave it, leave it open because I wanna show you the, from the operator point of view, um, how easy it is to clean this machine. Let me get my tripod here so I can set this on and give you a little bit of a demonstration on the cleaning side. So as you'll notice, as I open this up, you'll notice, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but on both these out, both of these belt covers, we've also integrated our standard stain, robust stainless steel sensor to ensure that the operators at no point while they're operating the machine will have access to the rollers. Um, again, these robust sensors are the standard for the leafus, and these differ from some of the standard uh, plastic interlocking safety sensors, which are prone to, uh, prone to short lifetime. We have a cantilever design here for the belts that allows us to simply loosen the belts for virtual immediate removal. Now, as I mentioned before, this is why I kind of kept this open. Um, there's only, you're, you're gonna remove your wheel for cleaning, but then in order to remove the belts, there's a simple one, two, three bolts that are removed to remove this little piece, this little piece here to allow immediate removal of belts. It's a, no more than a two minute process. We'll go ahead and put this belt back on and tighten it up, which again is a very, very simple process. Tighten it up and we're ready to go. I'll close up the, uh, the in-feed chute, or, yeah, the in-feed chute, the belt, the belt covers, and we'll take a look at the control panel and what that means for our machine. Now, one of the things that, that Greg mentioned um, as far as design, standard design features was integration and automation. As a machinery manufacturer, it can be a very simple process just to say, here's a shredder or a slicer and um, allow you to, or ask you to handle all of the integration. But what we do for processors is we do as much as we can to make it easier or simpler for the processors to integrate our equipment into their line. Because as Greg mentioned, we approach the industry not from just a machine basis, but from a whole, a, uh, a whole system mindset. So what we've designed the Leafus for is we've designed it with uh, the capability to integrate into a full processing line. So that using the, the equipment inside of the control panel, you can make your, you can allow it to talk to your system and allow your system to talk to it. So either you can control components of your line using the start and stop and emergency stop features such as your conveyors, your in-feed and out-feed conveyors, or you can integrate, you can control this whole panel from your remote, uh, your remote control um, room, and which would allow you to monitor it while it's running, and would also allow you to hit the resets and actually start the machine. One of the primary things that we've done for the operator usability of the machine is we've simplified the control panel. As you, as I'm sure you could tell, you have a uh, two belts and a head that have to be going at specified speeds in order to get a one inch cut or an eighth inch cut. <clears throat> Instead of requiring a, a, a series of knobs on the control panel that require the operators to tune it in, we've done all the work for the operators. We've designed this, uh, a, a very, very precise set a uh, series of wheels which is designed for uh, specific sizes of cuts whether they're shreds or chops and along with those wheels we have preset the VFDs inside the machine for both the wheel and the belt to um, run at the specified speed for the most precise cut size so as you see right now I have this set on uh, on preset number eight 
And what that's going to do, that would normally be for a 2000 series wheel. <clears throat> right on the machine, I have a 200 series wheel. So I'd simply turn it to preset one and press go. One of the other simple things, but this will show you how DeVille and FAM work, is each of these pictures, each of these images that we have on here, they're not plates that we uh, bolt on to the control panel. These are actually etched in and there's actually no, there's, there's no rough surfaces. So that ensures that no food can build up in this area and no, no food can actually build up on the machine. I think that leads me to what I think will uh, end my feature tour of the machine. And that is the sanitary design side of, of how we've designed the machine. So, going all the way just to the control panel. The control panel, as you can see, is not actually in the product zone. However, we want to make sure that as many pieces of the machine as viably possible are built with a sloping design, even down to the handles, so that when the machine is sanitized and washed and cleaned, the water runs off rather than pooling and giving you an environment for bacteria growth. In addition, we've designed the machine with, uh, with standoffs. So you see the, the control panel actually has standoffs between the frame and the panel so that we can ensure that no product is able to build up within this zone. As you can see, there's been a lot of uh, thought put into the actual design of this machine. Rather than just making a simple shredder that can take your product into belts and shred it and get it on its way, We've put as much thought as possible into the small design features to make sure that there are no small uh, catch points for bacteria and that there's no places where the, the water can build up. But we've also been faithful to the design side of things. We've made sure that the entire machine is going to be the most uh, give you the most precise shred or chop that you're going to get. And we've taken and made sure that the operators who operate it have the least amount of hurdles in order to learn the machine and operate it most effectively. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a, a couple of pre-recorded videos uh, that we shot just yesterday to help you understand uh, what the machine will actually do with certain products. The products we've chosen to demonstrate are uh, green cabbage and red cabbage. Um, I've gone ahead and cored these products to ensure a, a, a consistent shred and for the green cabbage in particular, you'll see that there are uh, a lot of loose leaves that are accessible. As I pull this up, I'm, you will see um, from these loose leaves, this is one primary challenge uh, that you have for the, the cabbage processing. M many people use a specific processor or a specific shredder that has a challenge it, it, it's a challenge for them to actually process the leaves. So you'll notice that um, as, I, as I pour these in, these are not pre-cut heads. These are the full heads. And these heads, this, this is processing both the leaves and the full head. As you'll see, we have a really nice nest of product here um, and a beautifully consistent shred um, from the, from the leafus. I spent a little bit of time walking through this, but I just wanna show you some of the specifics uh, results that it's given. And here toward the end of my video, um, you can see kind of some, a little bit of up close of the quality of this shred. Now to go on to our red cabbage. Once again, very similar. The red cabbage didn't have a lot of loose leaves, uh, at least the red cabbage that I demonstrate here. But the, for demonstration purposes, the primary thing that I wanna show you is the machine's capability to handle full heads. Looks like it's gonna be a little slow on opening up, so we may have to take, check out some videos.
while that's trying to decide whether it wants to open up, I just want to take a look at some of the some of the uh, videos or some of the pictures of the actual end results. And I guess we're here. We are. Here we are. So here's our red cabbage, and a very quick and easy process. We're going to shut the machine down and then show you some of the results. And back to our pictures, just to give you a, a, an up close, um, a, a few up close details on what that shred looks like. So I think that's gonna end our demonstration of the Leaf Fist 2 today. Um, we've been able to walk you through the machine and highlight some of the design stand, the, the standard design features that Greg pointed out, um, and then give you an idea of what how it can actually process full heads of, of, uh, of lettuce in order to cut down on the actual pre-processing required um, by your teams. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Greg. Greg, I appreciate the introduction and uh, I'll turn it back over to you for, to, to wrap it up. That was fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Nehemiah. So that wraps up our, uh, our webinar on, uh, on, on Leafis. Uh, if there's any questions, I think this would be a good opportunity to uh, to, to, to answer anything that uh, anybody might have. Anna, can you have a look to see if uh, we have any questions coming up? I don't up? have any questions at the, at the moment. I've been uh, monitoring that Q&A button, but so far no questions. So I guess it was uh, it was a very uh, clear uh, session. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. thank you for those of you who have attended, and uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Nehemiah. Thank you, Greg.